to another episode of Live Your Life with Love It. Hello, friends. Uh, it's expedient that in concluding this Love Life series that I share these truths with you, um, I'm going to be talking on love balance and love boosters. Love balance. The key here is balance. All right. We've, we've talked extensively. I've taught extens extensively by the grace of God and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I've talked, taught extensively over the weeks and months on love life, right? Your love relationship with God, with yourself, and with other people. So we are looking at love balance today. Father, thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for your unwavering love towards us. Thank you for your faithfulness. I pray for as many who are watching right now that they experience your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. And welcome, my dear viewers, my dear friends. And welcome. It's always a joy to have you here. It's always a joy to have you listen and hear what God has for us. God's truth is always, is always a joy. So we are talking about love balance in concluding the Love Life series. I would like to look at, uh, let's look at Romans chapter 13 verse 10. The Bible says, love walketh no ill. Love walketh no ill. So which means you cannot say you love someone and you hurt the person at the same time. Because the idea of love is that you seek the, another person's good. It could be your spouse, it could be your family member. Just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love does not vaunt itself. It doesn't seek only her own. Even Paul expressed this in Philippians chapter 2. He said, esteem the other person even better. Seek the good of another person, not just your own. Let love flow. That's what Paul was talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 said, the love of Christ constrains us. The love of Christ constrains us. It disciplines us. That's what it means. Because of the love of Christ in you, there are some things you cannot do. Because you love God. Because you love God. You know, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. How you treat your body matters. If you know that God lives in you, if you know that Christ lives in you, you will not mess up your body. You will not misbehave with your body. There are certain things you will not take into your body. Certain things that are not pure, unholy, that you will not take into your body because you love God. That's what the scripture said. He said, the love of Christ constrains us. Because of that love, there are some things you will not do. Because of that love, you will not cheat on your spouse. Mm -hmm. Constrains you. Because of that love, you will not betray your loved ones or your loved one because of that love. You will not. It constrains us. So if you really want to check out the things you do every day, I think you should look at it from the, from the, from the, from the camera of love, through the lens of love. Love is the lens through which you filter on a daily basis from what you do, the things that are right and the things that are, that are not right. Hence Paul said, love never fails. It helps you to make the right decisions. It helps you to do the right thing. It helps you to, to treat people right. It makes you treat people right. I said it in the previous episode. I said love is who you are. It's who you are. If you have God and God is love, it means you are love. So that's who you are. Love is just not, it's not just what you know. It's what you do. It's how you relate to people. It's, it's your lifestyle. It is you. It is you. You are God's love gift to the world. That's what I said during the previous episode. You are God's love gift to the world. So, in talking about love balance, I like to talk about tough love and soft love. It's very important because a lot of Christian folks don't understand this. Nobody wants to hear about 
certain things when it comes to the comes to scriptural principles or scriptural values. But like I say, the Bible is is like a book of checks and balances. Right? When you remove the checks, you lose the balance. So it's very important that we look at this in concluding this love life series. Tough love and soft love. So there's gotta be balance. There's gotta be balance. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 said, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 says, Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth, it yields the peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing to merge these two words, right? For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens, he disciplines, he corrects. It's amazing. But that's the deal. A lot of folks like the soft love, right? Everything is just going, oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, I love Jesus and stuff like that. But... When it comes to the other aspect where you are pruned and you are groomed, you are built up. People, nah, people don't like that. People don't like that. Even, um, imagine, if, even with kids. When you love on them, throw chocolates at them and all that stuff, all the candies and goodies, they are, they are all smiles. But when you restrict them from doing some things and say, hey, sit there, get your book and study. The smile disappears most of the time. Maybe when you when you discipline them, or you tell them, "Hey, you're grounded for for doing this and this and this and this," they begin to grumble. Oh, daddy doesn't love me anymore. Mommy doesn't love me anymore. Nah. But here's what the Bible says: It is the one God loves that He corrects. It is the one God loves that He chastens. So the deal here is God. Your heavenly father, your creator, can't correct you. And he corrects you and I because of love. So also your parents, as the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 6 verse 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and your mother so that your days shall be long on earth and so that it will be well with you. For this is the first commandment with a promise. With a promise. When your parents make out time, take out time to correct you, to advise you, to counsel you, to caution you, to discipline you, be grateful. Be grateful. Because look at what, what Paul is saying here. Look at what Paul is saying here. He said, Now, no chastening for the present seem to be just but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. There's always something good to come out that will come out of you when you submit yourself to training, to discipline, to correction. Something beautiful comes out of you. Because when your parents, your elders, your, your tutors, your guardians, when they correct you, when they instruct you as to how the way to go, And you embrace it as love, you are better off. But when you when you kick against it, you only suffer the consequences. Like Proverbs says, if you refuse instruction, you will not refuse destruction. It's a sign of love. You cannot get everything you want. Because there are some things that you are crying for right now that will hurt you. There are some things that God withholds from you. Even there are some relationships, some people, some friends that God withholds from you. And you are crying, Lord, Lord, I want this person in my life. Lord, I want her in my life. I want him in life. And God is saying, listen, this person, where you are going, where I'm taking you to, this person doesn't fit into the picture. So it's a call sometimes to stop struggling with God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, 
lot of evil thoughts. I have plans to to give you that expected end, to, to bring you to the expected end, to give you a hope and a future. To give you a hope and a future. You know, I sit back and I laugh. I'm a mother, I'm, I'm, I'm a parent, I'm, I, I, I have, I have uh, my own children, I have both biological and spiritual children, and I sit back and I laugh, I say, wow. Sometimes when we correct our, our children, we see how they are mumbling and grumbling. They say, oh, oh, I can, we can imagine how God feels. <laughs> we can imagine. When someone corrects you, you are working in a department in your church or you are working in your office and a superior corrects you and you complain. It means you are not ready to grow in that area. It means you are not ready to grow. Because growth means change. Growth means improve, improvement. Growth means progress. Growth means promotion. It means you are ready for promotion. Anybody who refutes, anybody who rejects correction, it's going to be difficult for them to make progress in life. It's going to be very difficult. And, and, and look at it here. Correction is God's way of telling you that he loves you. Isn't that amazing? So, so correction is God's way, is man's way, all right, as parents or to our loved ones, maybe uh, as, a, as, as a spouse. It's also your way of telling your loved one or your children that you love them. You love them too much to allow them delve into things or areas that will hurt them. That is it. Look at what Revelation said. It said, Revelation 3 verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke. This is, this is a strong word. I rebuke. How many people, how many people are, how many people, how many people are comfortable with rebuke these days? You rebuke them, they begin to frown. Look at how this person talked to me. Look at how this person treated me. Look at how, he, I didn't, they didn't even allow me to, to express myself. I was trying to, and look at how they just, look at how he, she just rebuked me. Look at how she just, he just rebuked me. And sometimes some people walk out and say, you know what? I'm not going to serve in this department. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to do such and such. You are not ready to grow. If you want to grow, you will, su you will submit yourself. Submit yourself. Subject yourself to correction. To rebuke. To training. To chastening. So that you can be better. So that you can be built up. You can be built up. I, I put up on my... On my one of my platforms some days ago, I said my platform some days ago, a great leader was once a great follower. Mm. Because you cannot lead people to a place that you have not been. So when God is looking at you based on your future, based on your destiny, and is putting out some things, it doesn't appear to be, it's not palatable. When your loved one sees your spouse, your loved one, your parents, for example, they see something in you and they're like, ah, where this relationship is taking, where, 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 where this person is going is great. And they are cautioning you and telling you, no, I don't want to see this person, you mingle with this such kind of person or go to such kind of places or do such kind of stuff. You know, it's because of love. It's because of what they have seen in you. Because of love. As many as I love, I rebuke. So I can also say, as many as I don't love, I don't rebuke. So it's also possible to, to, to just oppose it and say, as many as I don't love, I do not rebuke. There's an update that said, it is, it is the, the child that they love in the community that, that they correct. The one that they, don't, they, that they don't love, they say, leave him or leave her. Let her be doing whatever he or she likes so that he or she can be useless. But you will not be useless in Jesus' name. The enemy will not truncate your destiny or your prospects in Jesus' name. That is the thing. Is just look at what God is saying here in Revelation. As many as I love, I rebuke. Revelation chapter three, Revelation three verse nineteen. I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He was rebuking the church. He was rebuking the church here. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Proverbs 19 verse 18, what did he say here? He said, chasten thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crime. 
testing thy son why there is hope and let not your soul spare for his crime even if he's crying don't spare him discipline him now why you can why you can train him train him now train up a child in the way he should go it is better to prepare a child than to repair a damaged adult if you love that child just like our just like the lord said in revelations as many as i love i chase him as many as i love i rebuke and i chase him if you love that child you will talk to them if you love your spouse the way he's going now the way she's going you will sit him down you will sit her down and say honey we need to talk about these things there are some things i'm observing if you need to, to seek counsel from a third party a mentor a superior look you look up to it is better than watch your loved one go down the drain to the pit so you be quiet not doing any, anything about it being indifferent you also contributed to the downfall of, the, of that person all right so are they going to clap for you for the downfall of maybe your, your spouse or your loved one or your family member or your child can you see your child going the wrong way and you do nothing about it and you think it's love that's not love that's your responsibility as a parent that's not love you can't see your child or your loved one going down the drain and you stay aloof and you stay indifferent that's not love that's why God said in Revelation 3 19, He said, The one I love, I rebuke. I rebuke and I chase him. I counsel, I correct. I correct. Parents who truly love their children will not sit aloof and watch them endanger, endanger their lives. A six year old cannot meet the daddy, no matter how much the daddy, the daddy loves him. Daddy, give me your khaki. I want to drive a car. The father knows that is a death sentence he's sending that child to. A wise child cannot possibly say, a wise parent, I beg your pardon, cannot possibly say, oh, I love my child so much, take this khaki. A six-year-old boy, you are sending that child to the grave. You are sending that child to the grave. Proverbs 27 verse 5, open rebuke is better than secret love. It's better. Proverbs 27 verse 6, faithful are the wounds of a, of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, the kind of friend that tells you the truth. No matter how much it hurts your ego, but it's the truth. It will help you. It will help you become better. It will help you become a better husband to your wife. It will help you build your home rather than destroy your home. It may not appeal to your ego, but it will help you to have a great future. Is that not wonderful? It may not appeal to your ego or to your pride, but at least it will help you attain that, that favorable and pleasant future that you, that, that you, you desire. It takes love to correct. I tell my children when I, when I talk with them, I say, you have to be grateful that you have, if you have a parent that advises you, that counsels you, that corrects you, always pray for them, be grateful. Not many, many people have loved ones in their lives that tell them the truth. I can, I can bet you on this. There are many people who are suffering many things today because there was nobody to tell them the truth. Very many people. There are many people who are biting their fingers, who wish they can, they can roll the hand of the clock. Now, because... They are in a pit right now. So many things that they have found, mess that they have found themselves in. Because at that time, there was nobody. At that time, there was nobody around to tell them the truth. May you not get to the point where they will say, leave him or leave her. Ah! That's a dangerous position to be in. May you not get to that, that point. When you look left and right, front and back, and there's no there's nobody to give you good, wise counsel in the multitude of counselors their safety so if you still have people who speak into your life who counsel you who share god's truth with you just like this platform the live your life ministry platform mentoring people 
how to live the God kind of life, how to live according to godly principles, how to live as God's word has said. If you see how such people, be grateful. Pray for them. Thank God for them. Be grateful. I thank God that I have people I, I, I draw counsel from. I thank God. I thank God. Because nobody succeeds alone. If you have people speaking into your life, that's the proof that you are loved. It's because God loves you, that is why he gave me this, this vision, this ministry. Because he loves you. You that's listening, it's because, he, it's because of you. It's not because of me, it's because of you. Because he loves you. You're welcome. You're welcome. The pleasure is all mine. It's all mine. And I thank God for the privilege. I thank God. So it takes love to correct. True love wants you to be better. God loves you the way you are. But he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. And that's how parents are. That's how even your spouse is. They love you. They accept you the way you are. But they love you too much to leave you the, same, the way you are. Because you cannot expect to be doing the same thing and expect a different re result. You want to make progress? Change must happen. Right? Change must happen in you. Change must happen to you. For you to make progress. All right, my dear friends, thank you so much for being a part of the Love Life series. With this, we are going to call it a series, a teaching series. Um, we are calling it um, a wonderful time with the Love Life teaching series. Uh, even as we look towards the next teaching series, which is PowerPoint. Thank you for listening. We do hope you have been blessed by those wonderful life-transforming words. Join us next week for another episode of Live Your Life with Love It. For more information, log on to our website www.liveyourlifeinternational.com. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Live Your Life International. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Live Your Life with Love It for more powerful messages. For prayers and counseling, call plus 234 three two nine five seven one six one or plus two three four eight zero five five four one eight nine eight six call and whatsapp you can also send your questions to love at gmail.com live your life life according to god's purpose